Hi guys, it's Chris at Cork and Crown, back in my cider shed with some more cider to try. And not one cider, oh no, not one cider, two ciders from the same company and something else as well. I'll tell you the cider first. It's uh, We had one from this person before, the batch number three, and I quite enjoyed it. That was episode 294, I think. I'll put it on the screen. Oh, you got a glimpse there, didn't you? So what is it, Chris? I'll tell you, it's Luke's. Luke's Cider. And it's Luke's Original Sin and Luke's Infernal Infernal, Infernal Serpent. Both 2019 vintages. So I think this guy lives in uh, North London. So, uh, Stoke Newton. And makes his cider in Somerset. He is a guy called Luke. Uh, Travelled around a bit. Worked with different producers. And yeah, this is the result. But before we open those... One more thing here, and it is something we haven't had for quite a while. Something we haven't had for quite a while, and it is a bit of cheese. And it's this little bit of cheese here. Look at that. Nice rind on that, isn't it? Yes, Chris, a very nice rind. Thank you. Um, bit of go with Cafilli. Down to Borough Market today. Uh, it was tasting great. So I got a bit. I thought I'll have it with some cider. Um, won Super Gold at the World Cheese Awards last week, week before, along with Pitchfork Cheddar as well. So I work for the Tristan Brothers who make this and the Pitchfork. I'm very, very proud we all are that it was so well uh, received at the International, the World Cheese Awards. Yeah, came like fifth, sixth, something like that. Not bad going, huh? Not bad at all. Right, so anyway, but this is a cider show. It's not a show, but you know what I mean? Rather than a cheese show, although we love cheese and cider equally. Uh, so let's, which one of these should we try first? So that's 5.5 percent that one is 6.2 let's try the 5.5 first so the first one luke's original sin 2019 funky cans yeah very funky cans looks like a you know contemporary craft beer can now that doesn't it it's nice that things come in cans though they're better in many many ways than bottles which we won't go into but they just are oh and if luke happens to watch this get in touch mate i live in london as well and i love cider so you know It'd be nice to have a conversation. He probably won't, but it'd be nice if he did. Let's pour it out. Let's pour it out. So we are looking at, I remember the last one, a good carbonation, like gentle. And this seems to have that as well, and good colour. And this has that as well. Uh, I think it's, um, I, I assume, I think it's wild yeast. It's definitely slow matured, matured through the winter. Hazy, you know, good colour. So we think in proper cider apples. Yeah. Good so far, and in really low carbonation. Actually, just the, the, and the bubbles look quite fine, quite nice texture. If I swirl it, get a lovely kind of texture of um, a form on there, a head on that. Great. Let's smell it. Oh, <laughs> it smells a lot like the third batch in my in my brain. Um, reminds me a bit of uh, the um, Secret Orchard X One Mellow. I said this last time, but it does. It's got that rich dessert, sorted apple kind of character. Really nice, really rich, really intense. Um, smells like a, like a, like an apple that's been cooked, basically with, with sugar. That's what it smells like. Very nice it is too. Very nice it is. Let's try it. I'd say that's a medium. Um, yeah, medium, the sweetest medium, but not too sweet. I like it. Um, I assume it's back sweetened. Anything on the can about this? Luke's been making small batch cider since 2014. Original Sin is a 2019 vintage, deliciously easy drinking, sparkling medium cider, well fermented and matured for over a year until just right. Okay, so I guess it must be back sweetened. Um, it is, it's, it's on the sweeter end of medium, I would say. But to me, it's acceptable. To some, it might be too sweet. But it doesn't feel like a clawing sweetness. It feels like a nice, natural sweetness. I mean, I think it's back sweetened, but I assume he's using sugar or something to back sweeten. Possibly apple juice, but I assume he's going to use sugar. And then pasteurise before canning. What assumes most people are pasteurising when they put things in cans. Because if anything goes wrong in a can, not great news. Not great news. Um, yeah. So, it's nice. It's sweeter than I thought it was going to be, but it actually, it's it tastes like I thought, like it smells. And that's not always true. Sometimes things smell sweet and then they're dry. This smells like it's going to be like a desserty apple uh, cider, and it is like a desserty apple cider. Not this made with dessert apples, but it's got that kind of dessert characteristic to it. Uh, tannin, very little. 
a little bit of astringency. No leatheriness on the back at all. Um, yeah, that is another solid cider. Um, sweeter than the last one. I think I like it a little less sweet. I have a sweet tooth, but I feel like because it's low in acidity, it, there's nothing to balance the sweetness quite as much as I'd like, but it's still a very tasty, tasty, appley, delicious cider. So I'm going to have to neck this now until the next one. Hang on a sec. Nearly came out my nose. Right, let's read on what this one has to say for itself. Before, I just thought of the Gospel of Cider according to Luke. It says at the top, and then you got these biblical references. I don't quite like that. Uh, what does it say on here? Infernal Serpent is a 2019 vintage, full bodied, sparkling, dry cider that places a, a packs a punch, well fermented and matured for over a year until just right. So I probably should have had this one first. Because it's good to have the dry before the sweet. Because this one's going to seem even drier. But what the heck? What the heck? And then we'll have a bit of cheese. Yeah, solid cider maker. This guy. I I, I really do think he's a good solid cider maker. Um, get rid of some of that. Let's pour this out. I expect it's going to have a similar colour and a similar carbonation. The carbonation is excellent. Bang on the money. Look at that. That's a great head. <laughs> I mean, that looks like a, like I've just poured out. A, a pale ale or something or like an IPA or something with that head on it that's great really nice head uh, even more more position than the last one lovely bubbles you've got it just right I think that carbonation it is spot on again nice colour almost like an amber sort of marmalade sort of colour uh, great head as suggested let's give it a sniff yeah so this doesn't this smells a little danker it doesn't smell like it's going to be as sweet and you can't smell sweet this this doesn't smell like it's going to be as sweet it's got a slightly darker earthier danker damper kind of smell like a wet forest or something like that is what it's made me think of a wet orchard let's say um more subtle but actually it's more appealing to me i think it is it's got it's got a bit more darkness and depth even though it's more subtle but that i associate with proper cider apples yeah, wet f forest or something, wet leaves, something like that. It's making me think of. I mean, there's a hint of apple in there, but it's really subtle. Let's give it a taste. That's not bone dry. There's just a hint, a hint of residual sweetness to it. There's a hair more tannin, I would say. I think there's a hair more tannin, um, loads less sugar. I think it's got about the same level of acidity, level, level of acidity but I feel like I'm feeling the acidity a little bit more just because it hasn't got the sweetness that the first one had. Um, yeah, I think, feel like, this, like there's some sharps in this. I didn't feel like there's any sharps in the first one. I feel like there's some sharps in this one. It does feel a bit bolder, but it's, it's, it's totally approachable though. It's not like a really challenging, you know, scrumpy or something like that. Nice, the nose is really good. It's like your Venus, the nose. I can't quite place. It smells like a red wine than a white wine on the nose to me, that. Nice. Getting great bubbles. Yeah. Not super challenging. It does feel like there's a hint of like a, the acidity feels, what is it? What is it? Um, almost like orange. It's almost like an orange character to it. But imagine an, arrow, uh, 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 an orange with almost no sugar. That's what it's making me think of. A kind of orange character. I do get that sometimes in the ciders. I do like it a lot. This has got, it has got more of like an orange, subtle orange juice character to it, which I really appreciate. This, yeah, I actually like this. I could drink a lot of this. 6.2% didn't say it was, so I probably shouldn't drink a lot of it, but I could certainly sell a lot of it as well. That's that's really solid. I, I really like this. I really do. On the nose, I'm getting hints of like leatheriness as well, which is probably what made me think of red wine, and kind of leathery tannic thing you get on the nose with red wines. And I feel like there might be a hint, a mere hint of hard tan on the back as well. Yeah solid for me that's a better balanced cider um it's interesting i'm getting some sort of overripe slightly sort of stone fruit 
characteristic as well. I want to say maybe apricot. Yeah, good cider. Let's have some cheese. So, natural rind, beautiful natural rind, which they develop in the machine rooms at the Jethowns Farm in Hewish, North Somerset. So, mucor primarily is this sort of grey. It sometimes feels like a bit like mole skin, but it's sort of, you, you get it, you get this sort of um, yeah, brown natural rind. You can smell musty. I say this a lot. Mushrooms, musty. Your nana's old wardrobe with old coats in and stuff like that. I, mean, I don't know if that that applies anymore when I was a kid you know like mothballs that kind of thing but in a good way you know musty Oxfam shop that kind of thing really nice hints of meat to this you can see under the rind where it's broken down so that rind is breaking the paste down to the action of uh, protease and lipase so uh, breaking out fats and proteins making it softer less acid giving you more flavor compounds in the middle you get this brighter white bit so it's more crumbly a lower pH, higher acid because the, the rind hasn't broken down that centre bit. So you get the taste of the rind, the taste of the bit of the paste under the rind, and then the, the, the sort of more acid heart. So you get three cheeses for the price of one. And this has almost got like a, like there's tiny bubbles in this section. It's almost like it's been aerated. Yeah, it was, it, I saw it this morning. I thought that looks cracking. Add a bit. And it was cracking. So let's try the whole thing at once. Eat the rind. The rind is great. Perfectly salted. Love the acidity. Mm. The texture is brilliant. The rind and the soft element which broken around down is delicious. Um, man. And then there's something like a savoury game, game, gamey kind of element on the finish as well. We've got the earthy character. We've got that lovely lactic twang from the middle, but it's not too dry. It's still got moisture in it. And the gaminess on the finish from that rind and the breakdown at the edge. That's cracking. That's really good. Really good cheese. No wonder it did so well at the Cheese Awards. Mm. I'd have it with some side dishes for fun. Mm, mm, mm. There is a hint of sugar in that. And with the low salt levels in that, sweet and sugar together. You know what? They're not perfect bedfellows, but Jesus Christ, that is actually really tasty. That is really tasty. I'm a happy man. That's all you need to know. So there you go, guys. Double header of ciders from Luke's, the Infernal Serpent, and the Original Sin. And a bit of cheese from the Trafalgar Brothers in Jewish North Somerset. What a lucky man am I. Yeah, check these guys out. These guys, check this guy out. If you haven't already, um, if you like sweeter ciders, then you certainly want to go for the original sin. But for me, the Infernal Serpent, that's the one to try. If you only get one, give that one a go. All right, guys, thank you for joining me back in my shed. Sorry it was such a long episode, but it is what it is. I hope you join me again. But until that time, cheers. <laughs>